Today, we have a wonderful woman of God, and she happens to be the pastor of our sister Kamfi in Columbus, Ohio. So Kamfi Pastor is here with us today. Anytime I think I need a therapy, when I sense stress around, I think I just need to be with her and the husband, they got the therapy. Amen. She's a wonderful woman of God. She loves people. And she loves the Lord. And she wants to see things going for God. She has extended her ministry all the way even to the Caribbean. And she's the one that even brought with her, you know, the team from the Caribbean that's here. And she's going to be ministering to us this morning. God has anointed her for this day. And there is a word coming for somebody. To go forward in your life, you don't need a statement. <laughs> Just a word. The Roman centurion said, only speak the word. I don't want a long statement from you. I don't want a paragraph from you. I don't even need a chapter from you. I just need a word. And when they were in distress and confused and didn't know what to do, he sent his word to heal them and deliver them from their destructions. The word to deliver someone from their destruction is coming this morning. The word to heal someone in their destiny is coming this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So get ready for the word. And bringing us the word is Pastor Cecilia C. from the New Beginnings and the Women of Christ all the way from Columbus, Ohio. But before she shares the word, I want to call on Dr. Melody from the Caribbean to lead us in the worship before she takes the mic. Let's give it up for the Lord. Hallelujah. I just lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. 
and going through that authority. Because you are the light for this church. When you come from here and travel, they will say, what can I church? Who the Buddha was in pastor? That's the name you carry. And I bless God for her in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm very humble to be here. I am a servant of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't talk about my personal life too much. I've been through it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have work. I used to be the secretary for Honorable Bar and Bala at the mansion. I served one of Honorable Fode A. Dakina, supplying rice to all the various counties. But the Lord said, This is not where you belong. You belong in my house. I ran as senator for Grand Cape Mount County on the late fire morning, Free Democratic Party. Hallelujah. But we got to put all of those things behind us and focus on one thing and one thing only the Word of God. I bring you greetings from the church, which I honor shepherd. The shepherd is Jesus. I honor shepherd here at his new beginning Pentecostal of Christ. Hallelujah. It's a young ministry, but we're heading somewhere. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And coming with this, on this assignment, we are here to officially launch New Beginning Pentecostal, dedicate the church. It's new. But I came with people that are faithful to God. Not to me, but to God. People who have never put their feet on the soil of Liberia. Hallelujah. But they fear God. And they serve God. Next to me, you can hear her name, Melody. This woman can sing four hours, no preaching. And you will see people falling under the anointing. This is Dr. Melody William from all the way to Ohio. Amen. Every one of these women that will tell you that my prayer for connection is answered. Our man in my own business at our name salon where God connected her with me. And for since more than 10 years, we have worked a partner. Hallelujah. That's Evangelist Vicky Eras from War Harvest Church. In Japanese, Evangelist Vicky and I, in 2004, we met a student at War Harvest Church. And when God brought the first ministry called New Beginning Pentecostal, I mean Women of Faith International Prayer Ministries, she was my main wife. And up to today, she stick with me. I want to bless God. This is Rob Parsley, one of the ministers in World Parsley Church, World Harvest. In Jesus' name. And next to me is Dr. Linda Brown. Hallelujah. This is the woman who opened the door for me to go to Israel. She came on the prayer line one morning. And I was prophesying and prophesying. And I said, there is a little bra on this line. And I said, there is something about your son. I don't know her. She don't know me. It's a prayer line. I have an international prayer line where people come from different cities, states, Canada, and they get on the line. And I said, there is a little bra on this line. I said, something about your son. But God is telling you, don't worry. He will take care of him. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. She will tell the story next time. And she called me and she said, I'm Lena Brown. I said, you Lena Brown from where? She said, I was the woman you were talking about on the line. I'm like, okay. And she said to me, do you want to go to Israel? And I have been stepping on the map of Israel, on my feet. And I've been telling God, I must see this place. I must step on this land for years. And I said, yes. I said, but the money is too heavy. She said, I'm not asking you for the money. I'm asking you if you want to go. And the next thing I knew, the traveling agents calling me and say, are you Cecilia? I'm like, yeah. They said, where is your passport? Are you a citizen? I said, why do you want my passport? I don't give you information. They said, there is money laid out for your trip to Israel. Praise the name of Jesus. I just want to bless God for people that God connect you with. And there are people that God has disconnected me from. And when they happy, I just glorify him. Because I know they need to be disconnected. There are certain people need to be disconnected out of your life so that God will take you where he wants you to be. And sometimes I will ask myself, did I go wrong? The Lord said, no, it's for your good. Because we don't like to be disconnected from people. Hallelujah. And so I want to bless God for them. This is my youngest, the last baby. Stand up and freedom. This is 
also her first time to see her motherland and her fatherland. Hallelujah. And this is my daughter. She lives here and she takes care of everything. This little girl gave the church from the grass to the roof. As single as she is. In Jesus' name. So I just want to bless God for each and every one of you. I was looking for a delivering pastor. Because my church needed deliverance at that time. And when Kavi said to me, Pastor, I got one of Bishop Kuku's son, Elijah. He is a delivering pastor. And I said, my God, let's send for him. Get a hotel. See how much it will cost for him to come. And the next thing Sister Kavi said, because I had heard about your pastor before. I had heard about him and some of the things, great things that he has done. Some of the lives that he saved. I followed him and I read about him. Hallelujah. And she said, Pastor, guess what? I said, what happened? She said, Bishop Kuhn himself is coming. I said, hey! Yeah. To a woman like me? He said, she said, yes. The how humble a man of God can be. A man who do not look at his experience. A man who do not look at his integrity. A man who do not look at where he came from. A man who is humble. church. When I tell them, well, we just a young ministry, we're not even reach, hungry, I say, well, I got other engagement. I'm like, for real? Give me the pen. Zip, zap. <laughs> because the Bible says there is joy in heaven. One. One. One sinner that repented. You want to know the size of the church? Before you come, I see you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to bless God. I thank God for the altar for which I stand today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, the creator of my life, the King of glory, the Lord of laws, the everlasting God. Father, in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, God, I humble myself, and I ask now, oh God, that I will fade away from you, and that you will minister to the lives and hearts of your people in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, I humble myself before you, oh God. I pray that you will take me enemies over every voice that come out right now. I command the voice to become like a two-edged sword that will pierce the heart of men in the name of Jesus. Lord, I plead your blood, the blood of Jesus, from the foundation of this building to the roof. I consecrate and I command every familiar spirit, everything that is not of you, we cast them out. Because your voice said in the book of Joel, when the angels came to present their report to you, set up with a mother, I cast out every spirit, every agent that is not of the kingdom of God. I command Holy Ghost my God, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. I command every diverted mind to come completely to attention to the word of God. Father, let your word reach your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. All and all of the time. Today I want to speak to you. I want you to please open your Bible with me. To the book of Luke. Chapter 19. Verse 1 to 9. Hallelujah. Luke. 19. One, I like the word of God, so sometimes I don't rebuke the cell phone because in America they come to church when you say open your Bible, they go to the cell phone. And while you're reading the cell phone, they're on Facebook. Amen? And it's the word of God that changes. Hallelujah. Technology is great. You will hardly see me on Facebook, messages sometimes once in a while. 
I love technology, but I don't sell myself out. So when you come to church, turn, turn the phone off. Give the time to Jesus. It belongs to him. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 9. Are you there? He said, and he entered Jericho and was passing through. There was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector. He was rich. He was trying very hard to see who Jesus was. But he was not able because of the crowd. Since he was a short man, hallelujah, so he ran, running ahead. He climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Since he was about to pass that direction, when Jesus came to that place, he looks up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. Because today, say today. today. Repeat and say today. today. Hallelujah. I must stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who says it, who saw it, begin to complain. He called to lodge to a simple man. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good. And all of this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But Zacchaeus stood there and he said to the Lord, Look, I will give half of my possessions to the poor, Lord. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I will pay back, hallelujah, four times as much. Jesus was so excited. He said today, say today. today. Hallelujah. Say today. today. Salvation has come to this house. Amen. Jesus said, because he too is a son of Abraham. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. I say God is good. And all of the time. And for those of you who love thing for message, this message, the thing for today is how hungry and desperate are you for the kingdom of God? Hallelujah. How hungry and desperate are you, are you for God's kingdom? It's easier to come to church and listen to the beautiful music. Even second love music. In fact, he was a musician. Praise the name of Jesus. He loves music. It is easy for us to be among the crowd. It is easy. So tell somebody, I'm part of Bishop Kuhn ministry. It is easy, hallelujah, to get your best dress on on Sunday morning. Praise the name of Jesus. After a hard work, hallelujah, it is easy to put on the best jewelry, the best cologne. But how hungry and desperate are we for this kingdom work? How hungry and desperate are we for God's kingdom? Are you desperate enough to be the first when the door is open? Are you desperate enough to clean the floor in the house of God? Are you desperate enough to serve the man of God without anything, any reward from him? Are you desperate enough to, to do things when he is not there? Or you will not do it when he's present? Praise the name of Jesus. How desperate are we after everybody else has left this ministry that you will look around and take a map and get on your feet and begin to map the floor? How desperate are you for you to be the last to turn the curtains on and make sure the light is up, the generator is up? How desperate are you? Praise the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, church, praise and worship is good. Jumping and clapping is good. But they will not take you to heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says Sakiron was a tax collector. And now when a tax collector, he was our chief 
tax collector. Now, when they were chief tax collector, Zachariah was a rich man, respected among his people. Hallelujah. An honorable man. But he was desperate enough. He did not allow his limitation as a shut man from seeing Jesus Christ. What is stopping you from worshiping God in spirit and in truth? What is stopping you from giving God your whole and your whole? What is stopping you to go beyond your scope in, in setting God to the limit where you can hear from him? Zachary was so desperate. He did not think about his honorable name or chief tax collector. Those days, they had the power in their pocket. The Bible said he claimed unto a sacrament tree. Church, whenever you go beyond your limit, you have no choice. Jesus will present himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Just the name of Jesus. When you are going through situation, I have testimony where there is an accident and the car is coming up the road and the driver said Jesus and the car came to us stay straight. But just calling in the name of Jesus, you invoke his presence. How desperate are we to serve God? When this man of God leave and travel, carrying the gospel around the world. How many of us stay behind and stay fulfilled and faithfully serve him and his wife, even in their past or their absent? How desperate are we? Hallelujah. God is looking for intimacy. I tell my church, praise God, I am not looking for a crowd. I am believing in God for men and women who heart is after God. Hallelujah. I am believing in God for men and women who heart are after God. Praise the name of Jesus. He said he don't see our countenance. Jesus don't look at our appearance. Jesus still look at the expensive of our clothing, the expensive of the jewelry, how many cars you have, how much you got in your account, how many houses and baby you got. What Jesus is looking at is the heart of our king. He is looking for our heart. Hallelujah. That is open our heart. He said, Behold, I stand to the door of your heart and I knock. If you hear my voice and you open up to me, he said, I will come and meet with you. How desperate are we for God's way? Praise the name of Jesus. God is good. And all of the time. I say God is good. And all of the time. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to take you to another desperate woman of the Bible. Today I want to just touch your heart, your hunger, your faithfulness. To do the work of God. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. If we go to the same book of Luke. Chapter 7 verse 36. It speaks about a woman. Praise the name of Jesus. It speaks. Somebody go to Luke. You got Luke. Let me read it quick. I like to read the word of God for the hearing of the people. Luke. Luke 7, 36. Are we there? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woman of God, can you read that portion for me? And one of the Pharisees uh -huh. desired him. Desire him. That he would eat with him. That he would eat. Praise the name of Jesus. One of the Pharisees desired that Jesus may eat with him. Go on. And he went into the Pharisee's house. He went into this Pharisee's house. And sat down. And sat down at the table to eat of Pharisees. Uh-huh. And behold. Behold. A woman. A woman. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. God bless you. 
the home of woman. Where does woman came from? In the city. Hallelujah. Does that woman have a name? In this particular scripture, what is there a name? No. There is no name. This woman entered in the presence of Jesus. If you go to Luke chapter 8, verse 1, it will tell you that even Jesus had women disciples. I feel sorry for pastor who said, woman cannot preach on a puppy. Woman might be silent. But today women are rising up with the gospel of Jesus. Because even in the book of Luke chapter 8, the Bible says, and women follow him. And they were even feeding Jesus from the little money. Susanna, Mary Madeline, and all of the other women. They serve him. Hallelujah. This woman entered. And the eyes were upon him. And they were looking at this woman. Because they knew her story. Praise the name of Jesus. And she never uttered a word. She came quietly. Hallelujah. And stood next to Jesus. Read your Bible is in there. The next thing she knew, she was not listening because they begin to judge her from their heart. I can see in the eyes of faith, church, that room was quiet. Because in those days, there were men that were suckering around Jesus. To see a woman poor enough to walk through all of these 12 disciples and other people's all outside. Because Jesus never traveled alone. Hallelujah. And all of the other people that were even outside of the building, in the eyes of faith, she found her way through. Hallelujah. And she came and knelt down before Jesus. The Bible says she never uttered a word. But they were judging her in her heart, in their heart. She knelt down and wept. And she wept. And she took on it and began to wipe his feet. Hallelujah. She began to wipe his feet. And they were quiet. And I believe Jesus was quiet. And she began to wipe. And after she had wept enough, she came with her little oil. And bust it in and begin to anoint his feet. But Jesus, who sees our heart, you can be here all day you want. If your heart is not in rest, then it will go on. I am telling you, you are wasting your time. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are not serving the one of Shabbat of this ministry. You are serving Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of your faith. The Blessing. You 
It's a war. It's a place of those that are persecuted for righteousness sake. When you decide to go deeper in the things of God, they will call you holy, holy. Let me call that the Liberian way. When you choose to go deeper for the things of God, they will call you Mami Dubuya. They have called me all those names, but I stand for righteousness. And I encourage you, church, do not give up. Don't be discouraged. Don't say go because you need something. A lot of us say go for a motive. I want you to serve Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Amen. This woman was desperate. And because of her desperateness for Jesus, he saves her life. He said, daughter, hallelujah, your sin has been forgiven. Yes. And they begin to quarrel in the heart. How can such a man even forgive sin? There is a name they have for me in America. He who died, fear no fall. Amen? Amen. I am for Jesus. You can say whatever you feel like. I am not afraid. Because I am serving a God who has fought battles over battles over battles over battles over battles over battles for me. But we have to be desperate for God. When I gave my life to Christ from a Muslim family, I went to the mosque. Uh -huh. My mother is a, 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 a haja. She lives with me. She stay praying the Muslim way and eat communion. I said, mother, you're confused. <laughs> you can't turn the TV up when it's Sunday. Gospel music. I said, you only blaspheme your Muslim people. But you are Christian. Amen. Amen. Call AG. It's my first church. Pastor Willie H. Paya. Those people pray for me. My parents said, we'll see you in our church, no food for you. I will go back. And I will go back. And I will go back. When I come home, they say, oh, your Jesus, you feel you? In fact, you, Muslim and Christian, we can't sleep in the same room. They put a bench outside. I will lay down there. The next day, I will join the AG Cowell Road. We will we'll be on TV singing something. My mom will be holding the surgery. She said, my people, you can't see. They can we know what to do with her. Yeah, they get on TV. Then the camera cameraman, he will take the thing right in my face. And they're singing. You're desperate that can open doors for you. Yeah. Today my mother called me Pastor C. It was the same mother that told me, because you brought disgrace to the Muslim, the rest of your sibling will take up close before you wear it. And I said, Jesus, you hear me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. How desperate are you? I will show you one more desperate woman in the Bible and I will close. Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I said, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. God is good. And all of the time. I will take you to Matthew chapter 15 verse 21. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew 15 21. A Canaanite woman. She was one of Jews. Praise the name of Jesus. This woman it was not a Jew. She was a Canaanite woman. The Bible said her daughter was desperately ill. Amen? And she heard about Jesus. My Bible said Jesus was coming and he was tired. So he didn't want a quiet, he just wanted a quiet time. And this woman was moving. She wanted to make sure she encountered. And when she got to the crowd, she began to cry. Lord, have mercy upon me. A Canaanite woman. Whenever I read the story of this woman, I put myself in her picture. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I will leave and go to my friend's house. 
change in the in your normal clothes. And then I go to church. And when I come to church, I go back to her house and put my Muslim clothes on and go to the house. But how many of you know that when Jesus entered inside you, there is no healing. My life begins to speak something different. My brothers and sisters say something is wrong with her. Praise the name of Jesus. And I will pretend for yeah, I pretended. But I was in God when we were aging. When, when I couldn't pretend anymore. They assault my brother to watch where I go. I will lie to my family and say, I'm going to um, math. I will not go to math. I'm going to math class on Wednesday and Sunday. And then I will go change my clothes. Then we'll go to church. Then I leave my Bible to Patricia House. We we'll come home. This day, it was past Sunday. And my brother today, he is a Christian. Yes. I got five of them are a Christian. We still got two more boys in him. He tapped me on the shoulder. He said, Madam, is this the math class you'll be going? Hallelujah. I begin to shake because I knew what was waiting for me. They sent for my father from Kakata. By the time they say your dad is here, I say, hello, Papa. He said, take out your clothes. Put the bench. The lady bench. I born you. Not for Jesus. Mm. And they gave me 25 good latches. I didn't understand the Bible. But as he was lashing me, I said, this is how they beat Jesus. And my mother said to me, thank God I got seven children. Because if you were the only one that I had, I would let my Muslim women there to bury me with charcoal. <laughs> that means I didn't have child. How desperate are you? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the mantle God wants to give you, he cannot just give it to you if you're not desperate to receive it. Jesus. 
Are you desperate? Or are you only here? Because we shall come praise and praise our heart story. Miracles are taking place. So you see, let me be part of this. Maybe my own door will open. Or you are here for the kingdom of God. Are you desperate? Now my God, take this man of God all over the world. Will you be desperate enough to keep this door open? Will you be desperate enough to keep revival going? Will you be desperate enough to keep the praise and worship going? Will you be desperate enough to keep the life in this place? Will you be desperate enough to financially take care of the situation that needs to be taken care of? How desperate are you? When you leave from here this morning, think about it. Think about it. One of the greatest presidents in the United States said, Hallelujah. He said this. He said, Not what the country can do for you, but what can you do? for the country. Not only your prayer being answered. Like I tell people, if I have my way, the whole America, the whole Liberia will be in America. Mm -hmm. But there are Liberians in America right now that I look at and say, you are a disgrace. You need to go back home. If I have my way, the whole Liberia will be in America. But there are people in America right now you are living better and more important life than them. Sometimes I look at them and say you are a discouragement. There are people that are believing in God with a vision and a dream to come to this country. And you come to the country, you wear the clothes right here. You have to get your passing around. You are an embarrassment. People who need to be here, I don't know how you get here. But church, I stand to tell you, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord with honesty. Serve the Lord with sincerity. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us stand on our feet. Verse 23. As I close, Jesus quoted that scripture for you and I. He said, The day is coming, and it is now. Hallelujah. He said, But the day is coming, and it is now. When what? Come on, church. You got it right there. When what? We'll do what? now if you have not take that scripture with you this is the now Jesus is talking about we are in the generation where the church must be a true worshiper hallelujah Jesus come to that scripture the time is coming and it is now what true worshiper will worship in spirit and in truth. And the Spirit of God will rest upon you if you worship God in spirit and in truth. I just want you to lift up your hands wherever you are in this place. Hallelujah. We want to ask God to touch our hearts. Praise the name of Jesus. Let us ask God to touch our heart that He will make us that true worshiper in Him. Hallelujah. God is looking for true worshiper. People that will worship God. People that will trust Him. People that will know Him. People that will know you are a miracle. If you don't know it, church, I want you to know that you are a miracle. Do you know how many people died yesterday? Do you know how many people even died today? Do you know how many will be there tonight? And every morning that you wake up, God has you in his mind. Jesus has you in his mind before he made the, the sun to rise. But he's looking for true worshiper. Hallelujah. I want you to just open up your mouth.
and begin to ask God to make you that true worshiper. Hallelujah, Jesus. We come to you, O oh God. Lord, we come to you this hour, Jesus. We want you to make us a true worshiper. Make us a true worshiper, God. Help us to be desperate and hungry for you. More than anything else, O oh God. Draw us to you, my King. Make us that true worshiper for you, my Lord. Make us that true worshiper for you, my King. Make us a true worshiper. Let this place be a place of worship, of honor, of 